Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and before I get started, I was flipping through my Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook and came across these pages, which are from the Watercolor Bible Journaling Animals class. So you can learn how to watercolor paint some animals in your Bible, and that class is currently on sale for the month of July, and I realized I hadn't mentioned that to you guys, so I wanted you to know that there is a discount on that and part of the money is going to go to charity, whatever you do pay. So I will put a link in the description down below to the class if you're interested in learning how to paint some of these animals. But let's get on to the angler fish. It is one of my favorite fish, weirdly. <laughs> I think it was ever since Nemo. But I was looking up something about angler fish, and I started playing with this little guy, and I thought he was so cute. If you just Google angler fish, you probably will come up with this link. And you can look at him from all different directions. And he's not a very pretty fish. I, I realize that. I'm going to make mine a lot cuter. But I love the antenna with the single bob on his head, which I think is hilarious. And as I was reading a particular piece of scripture and something else my pastor said and a bunch of other things that, you know, how God just brings stuff together and seems to keep telling you the same thing over and over He's been telling me about how perfect he has made everything. He made every creature, every person, every human, every everything perfectly in its task to praise him. That is what we were all created for, even these fish. And as I was just thinking about how ugly this fish is and how ugly I feel some days, and I don't mean that in terms of my beauty, but I mean just my sin and everything else, just the brokenness of the world and the brokenness of my life. God was reminding me that all of this was meant to praise him. Everything, every bit of it. And I can praise him. My sin can praise him as I am forgiven and redeemed. My failures can praise him as I have a testimony to move forward. I I can turn everything into praise for him if I have the right attitude about it. And these anglerfish are my reminder of that because they are so ugly. Um, I only cuter, but they are such ugly, weird looking blobby fish. As you can see, I made mine a little bit happier colors. I made them in a little rainbow of color and I wanted some dark color around the outside of them because they swim deep, deep, deep in the sea, which is why they don't have to look very cute because nothing can see them. They have those little antenna things that can light up so they can tell each other where they are, but really nothing sees them unless you're Dory and Nemo and you accidentally swim too deep in the ocean. But they praise him by being what he made them to be. He created them to be these weird fish that live in the deep. They do their job in the ocean. They eat the things they're supposed to eat and they turn into food for the things that are supposed to eat them. They're part of his creation, just like everything in our lives. And that's why I thought they would make a good page in my Bible. So I'm painting, doing the negative painting technique. I'm painting around these shapes with the darker color to define the edges of them. Once I was happy with it, I had it completely dry before ironing it. If you're doing really rich color, like this really dark blue background, I didn't want to come in with the iron and then lift up any of that color off the page. I wanted it to stay nice and dark, so I waited for it to be really dry and ironed it so it would be nice and flat for the pen work. And I'm using a Micron pen for this. I'll also use a, a white gel pen for some of it as well. And I've mentioned this before, but it's always easier to me to do the drawing after the painting rather than trying to do the drawing first and then try to somehow make the paint fit into those places. Because what I find is if something bleeds, if one of my little fins goes off into the blue and then the green goes a different direction, I get a little stressed out by that. But I don't get stressed out if I can then adjust the line once it's already painted. So I can redraw the fish in any way. They don't have to follow the pencil line. So if I screw it up while I'm doing the painting, it's really easy to fix. 
So with fish like this, you can make all kinds of different eyeballs on them, different expressions on their faces. I changed some of them from my original sketch, added a bunch of bubbles all over it. And then I did go in and darken some of the paint colors on the fish themselves. So there would be a little more intensity there and it would also leave some highlight on the tops of them where the sun might hit a little bit of them and they might have a little bit of brightness to them on the very tippy tops of them. The yellow one needed even some orangey color in him so he'd have a little bit darker down there in the deep depths of the sea and just went through and did each one of them. And if you're going to do this after doing all your pen work, because I did my white gel pen work, make sure you dry it enough that really your ironing, if you're going to iron again, is just going to be a quick second of ironing. Because if you end up trying to iron over top of any of the gel pen, I think of it as an acrylic ink. I don't know if that's what's in it, but it will stick to the paper that you put on top of it. I always sandwich my paper between some computer paper and it will stick to it if you let that heat stay on too long. So just do it real quickly. So I added more bubbles in front of the fish as well as behind them and the word praise here and there. Praise God all over the place because these fish are praising the Lord just by being who God created them to be. And you and I can do the same. Thanks so much. I will see you again next week. If you're interested in that class, I'll have a link in the doobly-doo down below. Bye-bye.